Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old Narrowboat Tilly and today we're going to have a look at some footage from doing the entire Montgomery Canal in a single day. It's not a huge feat to accomplish or anything like that but what I really want to point out is that the canal is only about seven miles long where you can currently travel down from the Langofflin Canal up in that direction but those near seven miles took almost six hours to actually uh, travel so it was definitely one of those days where I was traveling at the sort of pace that I love to travel at now we had all sorts of weather started off with high winds and rain and clouds but by the end of it it was an absolutely beautiful just perfect day traveling with the sun on your back and or the sun on my front actually and blue skies above just perfect stuff so without further ado let's start looking at some scenery and stop looking at this Right then, what a clip to open with this is. These are the locks at Frankton, and basically, as you pass through these locks, that's the marker that you're descending from the Langofflin Canal onto the Montgomery, and to sum up what the weather was like, as I was saying, that's how beautiful it was through the front, through the back, not so great. So, as we start dropping down through these locks, this first stretch of a uh, canal is literally just a set of different locks as you drop down. This very first one is a staircase lock of two locks, one directly into the other. You can see just how much of a drop you are doing in that space. And I didn't do much filming here, as it's always... Well, I wouldn't say it's always chaos, that might be overstating it, but basically... Because these locks you have to book through and they're only open for two hours a day, everybody, as you're seeing in this clip, is always here at one particular moment for those two hours. So there's always loads of people about and it never makes for the best sort of perfect footage. But this is one of the best clips that I've ever got of wildlife on the canal. You can see we got really close to this heron and then, in perfect fashion, I am wrestling with my hay fever voice here so I apologise if I sound a little weird. But what a great moment this is of just having the heron take off and then fly in that perfect loop in the classic heron way. They'll either keep moving down a little bit more, a little bit more as you keep getting close to them and then sooner or later fly off. But that was just ideal of literally letting us get really close, then flying in a nice big arc around us and landing at the back. Perfect. This is one of my favourite locks on the canal, on any canal, because it is, as you've just seen, so, such a small amount of a uh, drop, so it's nice and easy and nice and quick to do single-handed. You might have seen there that we have had other Dan and his fiance on board for this first part, and then here at the little aqueduct, they got off and walked back about a mile and a half up to the Frankton Locks where they'd parked. And I thought I'd just throw in a little bit of a time lapse here. I'll put a proper time lapse, the full version of this, uh, online at some point. But I just wanted to show that this is what the canal's really like. That you've got these huge stretches where it's really overgrown and you can't moor up on the, the towpath side and you've definitely got no chance of mooring on the off side. And then really, because of the nature of this canal being so quiet, it just becomes this sort of total empty and open, really old, really rural looking place. And I just love it so much as if you've watched my videos for a while now, when I've been down the Montgomery before, then you'll know that I just love everything about how rural it is, and the areas that it goes through. And what you see in really in these clips is just summing up the, I think, as we were the third boat down onto the Montgomery through the locks, the two boats stayed just by the locks, uh, a little basin there, and I don't think I saw... Yes, I saw one boat moving in that entire time of six hours or however long. Well, for basically, from 12 o'clock, there were two boats moving down and the boats moving up off the Montgomery. And apart from that, as far as I'm aware, in the entire rest of that day, from midday, there was only Tilly and one other boat moving on this main stretch of the Montgomery. As we're coming down here now to the, uh, I believe these are the Aston Locks off the top of my head. Uh, I'm starting to get confused in my old age with trying to figure out which is which. But there's a set of three locks, not too deep, just sort of what you would traditionally think of as a standard lock. 
and they, they're a few hundred feet apart, just down and around the corner in the distance there, there's another one, and there's three of these, and again, because you just never see any boats around, as we've got a swan with its bum in the air up there, and again, I'd just like to point the camera around and show you the different scenes that are not directly on the canal, but this is just a nice little nature reserve of just a couple of fields and this lovely little lake there, always a swan about, lovely place for walking once again, just some of the reasons that I love this stretch of canal. And as I was saying though, these locks here, because they're just in the middle of nowhere, these are where you'll see me do a lot of my time lapses and tutorials for lock based things, because you know that you're unlikely to see many walkers if any, but on top of that, you're almost certainly not going to bump into any boats along there. Again, this is my absolute favourite bridge of all the canal. And that bench there, I'll at some point get round to doing a video with some of my old footage from before I ever had a boat where I'd literally bike down to the canal at Maysbury and then bike up. And literally, I've got clips of me sat on that bench eating me dinner and stuff. And what a way it is to absolutely just perfectly sum up what I love about this canal. I have the weather to really show it off like this in the spring before all of the growth and all of the general reeds and everything have grown up to make it even more rural looking. I mean, just fantastic and what a way to end the day really. So I suppose I should really just say a few final words here as we're finally getting down to Maysby Marsh itself. You can see you've got the moored up boats to the right hand side here then the canal side pub right next to the bridge how traditional and stereotypical is that just again I, this is the sort of um, speed that i love to travel you can see here even while i'm veering very dangerously close well not dangerous but very close to the left hand side of the towpath here just how slow traveling it is and that's why it can take so long to travel such a short distance even ignoring the locks I just stopped off at the services to do a few jobs that you don't want to know about. Toilets, I'm going to say. Um, so, as Tilly nestles herself in just around the corner, you can see the bridge in the background there. I'll say thanks for watching. Check out my other videos for loads more boaty bits and goodness knows what else. I'm doing loads of videos at the moment, plenty of outdoors. Feel free to add me on Facebook and Twitter and like the Facebook page. Of course, please do consider checking out my books available for the Kindle. Nice short boaty books. Links to everything in the description. Patreon. Have a look at that if you want. If you don't, that's fine as I always say. But feel free to leave me some grief about it in the comments. Until the next time though, have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic week. Keep it boat worthy and farewell.